Hey everyone and welcome to another Marks and Crafts figurine review. Today we are going to be looking at something quite special. Today we are looking at the Portrait of Pirates Warriors Alliance Maximum Yamato statue. And if you don't know already, Yamato is from One Piece and is pretty much the entire reason why I actually started getting into the series, started One Piece a day, and am now deep, 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 deep into a hole that I had no business getting into. <laughs> Anyway, this is the first release of a proper like scale figure for Yamato and it's done by Mega House. It's an excellent model limited. There's a million different names for this thing, but basically it's a scale statue or or something close to scale statue for a One Piece figure, which are the Portrait of Pirates figures, which are mainly in scale with each other. There are a few that are exceptions to the rule like Kaido who's way too big so they couldn't make a figure that's in scale but it is still a really big figure. Anyway I've waffled on enough. This is the Portrait of Pirates Yamato. So you can see there's a nice window into the figure itself, there's cool promo art, there's her name here Yamato. And turning it around, see there's more images on the side. A lot of cool promo images on the back as well as all the legal information they need. More images on the side and a nice one on top. So there is like it's a really cool stylish box. Uh, it's really big, um, really imposing, which uh, I guess really fits Yamato. I don't know that much about them uh, just because you know I'm not up to there and I won't be for a very, very, very long time. Uh, but it doesn't mean I can't like the character. So I guess we should just get right into it and open it up. And now out of the box, here's Yamato. This figure looks incredible. The colors, the pose, the size of the figure, everything is just fantastic. It really reminds me that we are dealing with a high quality scale figure now instead of like a prize figure or uh, an Ichiban Kuji statue or anything like that. Like we're actually dealing with the big boys now. And you can see how much more effort and detail is put into a figure like this. Um, similar thing with like the Bashojo figures that I look at. There's so much like effort and like detail and everything put into these. Uh, really breaks it up from like the pop-up parades and things like that where sometimes they're half-assed. Um, but this is just, this is next level. This is uh, what I really wanted out of them. Uh, so we're going to be evaluating paint and sculpt first uh, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be a doozy because there's a lot to look at. So yeah let's get right into it. Let's get a closer look. So starting off with the face, uh, I think that they've definitely nailed Yamato's look and really nailed the actual like One Piece look because the One Piece characters have very distinct faces. Uh, just at a glance they don't look like anything special but uh, there's a very very unique way that they do faces and uh, they've definitely captured that in a 3D style which is even more impressive. And you can see the just sheer detail work that's put in. Um, the sort of like weird uh, determined laugh or smile. It's a really interesting look. The nice detail work on the eyes, the great hair sculpt in the front, the nice horns, and the waving hair in the back. And so there's a lot of dynamic element to this figure. So you can see everything's moving to the left. You can see the hair swaying just a little bit, but it's moving a lot for the rest of the hair. And you can see just little details like the earrings, the flow of the hair, the sort of like gold bow tying their hair up. You can see just how nice that hair looks. It's just really nicely done. See, even on the back, they did not half ass this figure at all. Just really, really cool. Nice muscles. Cool. Um, handcuffs, I'm sure the handcuffs have some sort of story significance. I'm not quite sure because I've seen figures of them without those, so I don't know. Uh, we'll move a little further down. You can see this big, beautiful bow just all detailed up. It looks like actual rope, which is so cool. It is a bit glossy, but it really fits the One Piece style. The sort of obi, I think it's an obi 
I don't know, the top looks really nice. Uh, there's this crest, which I'm sure is important to the plot or something like that, or but important to the design. It's a beautiful wave put in. There's some nice shading throughout that that gives it a lot of depth. Uh, there's also some shading on the hair that gives it depth as well. Uh, I'll also talk about how the hair moves from white to like a translucent green, which uh, is really hard to capture for Yamato figures. Usually it's just white then green, but this has actually got an actual transition in it and some strands go further than others. So that's really, really nice. Back here to the nice muscles. You can see this shading and detail work that's put in. It's so good. It's not just like, this is the top. Uh, and we didn't think of it. It's like the actual outfit is hanging on them. It's tied in certain areas. It's really, really cool. They really thought about it. And you can see on the other side, same thing. There's a lot of effort and detail put in. You can see that the handcuffs are also blowing in that same direction, which is really cool. Uh, on the big bow, you can see that there's this cool gold shade on it and I don't really know what purpose it has but the same thing is present on the weapon but only on one side of the weapon so I don't know if it's like a lighting trick that lights coming off this way uh, and so it gives some extra added depth to the figure but um, whatever it is it looks really cool and we'll get a bit of a closer look at the hands you can see they've detailed the fingernails and it looks really good. The hand is like in this very unique gripping pose. Uh, it makes it seem a lot more natural because it's a pose that you don't normally see. See the rope thing is here as well, as well as a continuation of that design from the top here. So it's like genuinely it's underneath this outfit. See this beautiful crimson uh, legging pant thing. I don't really know what it's called. Uh, it's a very traditional Japanese outfit. See that same gold color is present here as well as a deep red shade to give it even more depth. Uh, it almost looks like that gold is coming from the bottom here where you can see their feet. Again, really nice detail, really good shading. The sandals look incredible. It looks like actual wood, which is so cool. Uh, you can see Yamato's actual strength. They've crushed into this base and are using it to stand on and put a leg up. Looks really cool. This looks like rock. There's some beautiful detail work here. It's it's not the standard, uh, um, is it octagon? I think it's an octagon for the uh, Portrait of Pirate bases. And so this is a non-standard base. And I think they do that for the maximum figures. So that's really, really cool. Let's see some more detail work all on the back, more of the waviness of the legging thingy. And see just how big and nice that bow is detailed as well as how cool the club weapon is. It's just really, really well done, really well textured. And then this crazy transition of the gold looks so good. Overall, the paint and sculpt is just perfect. I can't see any issues with it. Yeah, I can't really see any issues with it. Just looking at the promo image on the box, it's captured the promotional image perfectly. This figure stands tall, looks great. It's just fantastic. And speaking of size, we might as well quickly do a size comparison. So here they are next to a pop-up parade, and you can see the difference in size that we're dealing with between Portrait of Pirates and Pop-Up Parade. Pop-Up Parade are traditionally around 110 scale, but not really. It's a non-scale figure, but it's kind of around there. Here they are next to a HG Gundam, and this is the HG Gundam Aerial, which is around a Figma size 112 scale figure. Um, so you can see how it looks against like uh, uh, the sort of more SH Figma Arts Figma style figures. And here they are next to a Master Grade Gundam. This is the MGEX Strike Freedom, and uh, the Master Grade figures are 1 100 scale, but typically around like a 1 8 scale. So you can see how they'd scale with like uh, a bigger figure. Now, uh, in terms of issues that I have with this figure, pretty much none. Uh, I wouldn't mind the shading to be everywhere on the mace because it just seems a little bit weird, or the club. It just seems a little bit weird that it's only on one side, but I understand it's this keeping the same sort of like glowing shade going. So you can only display it from one side. That's all good. Uh, the other thing that I don't really like that much is we do get two support stands to hold up Yamato and the mace. And 
look, it's fine, but uh, it basically means that this figure is too heavy uh, to support itself over time, which is a bit of a shame. And uh, I would have preferred that it was just designed without them, but it's not like it'll look weird with them. And I'll quickly attach them now so you can see. So yeah, like it does affect the image just a little bit by having the plastic rods, but it doesn't really impact it all that much. Uh, it's more noticeable from the back, but this one holding up the bow in the back, you can't really notice it unless you were looking. This one is a bit noticeable though, which is a bit of a shame, but that's probably the only issue that I have with the figure. And if you're displaying it just briefly to show off, <laughs> It's perfectly fine, so like for this entire review, they haven't had the stands yet and it's been fine. But uh, general thoughts about the figure and everything like that, look, it's just fantastic. There's a reason why they got me into <laughs> One Piece. There's just something striking about their design and they just look incredible. I'm so glad that they were able to pull it off in this figure. It's just so good. I'm so happy there are no paint errors or anything. I know that Mega House typically aren't the best in terms of quality control but when it's one piece they tend to like put their money where their mouth is they have to pull it off um so i'm glad that this also turned out and it's also really cool having a one piece figure that isn't pre-owned because <laughs> so many ones that i've gotten are pre-owned just because i've gotten into the series so late um so it's just really nice to have something that's new <laughs> um and what a figure it is it's gonna be so good uh, i'm looking forward to displaying it with all my other stuff Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video, and I will see you all next time.